Today's Toy Smart, we're having a look at the NECA Toys Aliens Xenomorph Warrior. The second alien figure from this particular wave, the other one being the first alien xenomorph. I'll show you actually a comparison when we get this opened up. For those fans of the Aliens property, the second alien movie, and uh, certainly already have some of your Marines, and you're looking to beef up some of the armies of aliens that you're looking to be fighting against, this is a perfect figure that you'll be wanting to pick up. Um, ages 17 and up is the warning down below, also indicating the choking hazard. Small parts, not for children under three years of age. Spinning around the back of the box, back of the package, it says the sole survivor of the Nostromo. Ripley is discovered in cryogenic sleep 57 years later by a salvaged ship. When she is taken back to Earth, Ripley learns that the company has established human colonies on the same planet where the alien attack originated. After all contact with the colony is lost, Ripley agrees to return to the planet accompanied by a team of Colonel Colonial Marines. Together they will rescue any survivors that remain and confront the alien menace head on. Down below, um, Windrix, I believe was the gentleman's name, the, the Marine in this release, as well as the first alien xenomorph as well. On the flip side, on the underside, you can head over to NECA at www.necaonline.com as well. You can see some of the pieces that they're producing, both alien and other. Spot's going to take a break and get this open up. When we come back, we're going to get a better look at the Xenomorph Warrior. There's more heading your way, guys. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. When you get the alien Xenomorph Warrior out of packaging, there's some mild assembly. You just spin around the back of the figure and tip the head up. You'll see that there is a hole right there because he does come with an additional spike, a little additional uh, piece to his back spike area here. Um, you could leave it off if you wanted to. It would allow you to adjust and move the head a little further back, but not really a lot. So I'm just more inclined to always leave it in. And you'll know right away which way it goes as this piece right here, this piece right here where Spot's got his finger on it. There is a groove right at the top here. This tells us right away that you can plug it in and this is the correct way that it goes in. And lining it up, plugging it in, and there you've got the alien complete. So very mild, mild assembly required. The piece as a whole is quite beautiful. Uh, very tall also as well. And by comparison, having a look at the already uh, figure that we've already had a look at, the first alien figure. I'll put the two next to one another. Bring the camera back a little bit. You can see that they are the pretty much the exact same figure, give or take. The only tooling that they've done differently is the hands. You'll see that the hands on the alien, uh, aliens, uh, warrior, a little bit different. They're a little more pointing, I guess is the indication, the description I would want to use. Uh, whereas the first alien figure I just basically had his hands, uh, his, or his fingers, I should say, just um, to kind of to get, well, spread, I guess, just like a, as a regular hand, uh, whereas the alien, kind of like the, the more gestured hand that they've given the, the alien warrior. I mean, you can really get some nice poses, especially if you have several of them, you can kind of have different gestures with the different aliens. Um, and also, as well, their feet, very different as well. This one, I mean, the first Alien really has a more human element to it, whereas then James Cameron was taking that core idea and made it definitely a little more Alien-esque. But really, aside from that, they use the exact same body, and uh, the heads, obviously the big change as well. Now, with the first Alien head, you can see, well, when we did the first review of it, his mouth did move. Yum, yum, yum. Uh, there was, as far as I know, still no button that you could deploy the inner mouth, uh, but the mouth is in there. Uh, the same thing can be said for the Xenomorph Warrior. Uh, his mouth also does open. And I guess if you 
if you can, you could probably get your finger in there to pull it out, the inner mouth. But uh, having not gone down that realm, uh, you would be, you know, you don't want to be jeopardizing. Uh, pulled out the mouth, but you wouldn't want to pull it too much, just in case you end up popping that right out. And just putting the mouth back in. It looks like it does sit on a, a, a small track, but again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too... I wouldn't be pulling this too much, just in case. You don't want it. You don't want to be ripping out his inner mouth. The alien certainly would not appreciate that at all. Um, if you were to use these, your eyes, you would also see too that the coloring is drastically different between the two. Whereas the first alien, very rooted in grays, very matted grays, blacks, blackish gray colorings. Uh, the alien's xenomorph, however, uh, has much more the blue highlights. So they're very, very different from one another. Though they do share similar bodies, similar components still very different from one another. Um, I still really love the alien. I always really love the alien more so with the domed hel uh, head uh, versus the what we ended up getting with uh, Cameron's version of aliens where this whole section was just more spinal. Um, Spot has theories that perhaps it might have something to do with the alien's environment, that, uh, you know, if it was born inside, it would be likely a domed helmet. If it was an exterior alien, it would have the more coarse spined uh, hel head. That may or may not be correct, but it's a theory that I like to have. Um, I love the coloring, though. I just... The coloring really brings out a lot of the details in the sculpt, uh, especially right around the mid cage or rib cage area of its uh, mid torso. And a lot of the details really, again, in that head bring out uh, because of the blue that they've put into it. Uh, it's, again, a really beautiful piece. He does still have, it still has the tail, the wire framed tail that the other alien also had. And you can bend and move it any which way that you want. Uh, depending on how really you'd like to pose your particular alien, you can certainly also have it more on a crawling uh, gesture than, uh, than the upright alien from the first movie. But I mean, with the super articulation that these pieces have, there's a lot of uh, clearance, a lot of give that you can do to the pieces. You can really manipulate and bend them any which way that you want. Articulation on the Xenomorph Warrior is that his head uh, is on a ball joint. It does rotate left and right. A bit of caution though, let's bring the camera and I'll show you. A bit of caution right here. You'll see the same tubes that were on the first Xenomorph are also present on this Xenomorph as well. So I would say when you turn it, uh, be careful. Don't turn it too much, too abruptly. You would not want to pull and pop this tube off, this extra little piece here. But uh, again, just brings extra details out. I like that these are loose pieces and not sculpted in. Shoulder articulation it has the same uh, hinged socket shoulders. I'll just pop this off, it's all right. Uh, the hinged shoulders, so they do hinge out. They go forward, back, out. Rotation at the bicep. He does also have a uh, really nice bend in the elbow which I don't know if I, I spoke too much about with the first alien figure, but I really like how much flexibility you can get in those elbows. Uh, the arms also rotate independently on their own. The hands rotate and bend. That, I love that right there, that the bent hand with the exaggerated fingers. That's a, oh, looks so cool. Uh, upper torso crunch via this ball joint, and you get a lot of motion in that ball joint. Um, again, like if you get, say, three or four of these, which I could easily see myself doing, get three or four of these in different poses, different uh, gestures, y they look so different from one another. Gone are the days of the alien figures that had just a standard swivel. I mean, y you know, you could get so many on, the, uh, on a display of them, but they all looked very similar to one another. I mean, with these... The new alien figures that we're getting, you get so many more possibilities for how you want to pose them. Uh, when you get to the legs, those legs are on a hinge ball joint as well, so they rotate forward, back, out. Uh, he has a bend. It has a bend, a double bend actually in the knee. And uh, no, uh, no swivel or anything here. 
no swivel in the lower leg, but you can mildly swivel at the upper leg area. And then as for the foot, foot rotates and moves up and down. So again, you get lots of articulation, a super sculpted piece, and overall an excellent looking alien figure. Still might even like the first alien figure a little bit more than I like this one, but there is no denying that this could easily be one of the best alien figures that we have gotten. If you've been collecting the marine figures, uh, we've gotten, I guess, three of them now. And if you want to have aliens surrounding those marines, these are the ideal alien figures that you'd be wanting to pick up. For that reason, the Xenomorph Warrior, I'm going to give him a 9.5. NECA did a fantastic job, and certainly to see that this is what they're doing with their alien pieces, I am more excited for what we're going to get down the road. Uh, rumor has it we're going to be getting an alien queen, and if that's the case and seeing what they're doing here has me extremely excited. Today's Toy Spot, we're having a look at the NECA Toys Aliens Xenomorph Warrior. Stay tuned, Spot's going to have more Toy Spots heading your way. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Hey.